Hello, everyone. It is the Prophet Michael David, a.k.a. Aries, and uh, I hope everyone's having a great day. Okay, if you can read between the lines of the title of this video, uh, today we're going to uh, destroy Judaism. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're just going to change it. This is a video that's basically an add-on of the uh, Mashiach isn't Jewish video that I put out a couple months ago. All right, well, I highly recommend you watch that video and all my other videos. Uh, we're going to do a quick recap here for those of you who did not. Okay, exhibit number one, chapter uh, 49 in the Bible, a.k.a. the Torah, uh, Jacob's blessing to his sons. This is the blessing to Judah, where he says that they will have the scepter between their feet and remain king until he comes, which is also translated in uh, more ancient Hebrew as until Shiloh comes. But uh, Shiloh is a reference to Mashiach himself, as the gementry of Shiloh is 345, and the gementria of Moshe is 345, thus meaning that Shiloh in Genesis is the second coming of Moshe as detailed by Maimonides. It's Maimonides 101. And that screenshot is just a few chapters later. Again, Genesis chapter 49, blessings of uh, Jacob's sons on his uh, 11th son, 12th um, child overall, Yosef, Joseph. And uh, he definitely gets the best blessings, but uh, the translation at the end, he will be a prince amongst his brothers or he is separated from his brothers, uh, is not as widely as contested as it should. In other words, uh, I don't care the translation, but two things cannot mean the opposite. Uh, he is a prince among his brothers. Yeah, represents what he became at the end of the Bible. But he is separated from his brothers. That doesn't make sense. I mean, if the passage meant he was betrayed uh, by his brothers, including Judah, he was beat up by his brothers, including Judah. Uh, he was stripped naked by his brothers, including Judah. He was sold into slavery by his brothers, including Judah. Yeah, that would make sense, but that's not what separated means. So now we finally get to the title of this video. How did Abraham F up? And to answer that question, we have to go to Genesis chapter 22, commonly known as God tests Abraham but on Wiki, it's also known as the uh, Binding of Isaac. Now, I'm going to screenshot the entire chapter, which is just two separate screenshots. But uh, I would highly recommend, out of all the words in the universe, you read this chapter. It's just one chapter from the Bible, but it is the crux of my next argument. All right, number one, you should read that chapter very well. Number two, one of my great gifts from God, being Mashiach, is I can clearly define the different parts of the Trinity, especially the difference between God and the angel of the Lord, which I have done before, but I will again do right now. All right, here we go. So God is is God. She is the uh, intangible creator God. She created the universe. She created us. She is the universe. Uh, she is the multiverse. And her personal name is Gaia. Gaia, God, Lord's uh, first creation, firstborn, um, is the who's commonly known as the angel of the Lord in all her manifestations, which we've talked about, which we will talk about in the future. But her personal name is Azrael. 
And then as I've explained many times before, I'm the third part of the Trinity. I'm the prophet. I am he or she, he in this case, who is imbued with the Holy Spirit, a.k.a. the power of prophecy. And let me just say before this uh, information bomb that as a prophet, I can tell you, you should always pray to the creator God, not to the others, not that you can't admire them. I very much admire the angel of the Lord and all her manifestations, but you should only pray to the Lord. And for the very same logic, you should always listen to and do what the Lord tells you to in spite of what anybody else in the universe does. Which brings me back to Genesis. Really read this one more time. In other words, God told Abraham to sacrifice Isaac as a burnt offering. Um, but right before he did, the angel of the Lord told Abraham not to sacrifice Isaac as a burnt offering. What should Abraham have done? Now, I hope most of you are like, God cannot have wanted Abraham to actually sacrifice Isaac because that's human sacrifice. And that story is all about how humanity developed from super human sacrifice to, I guess, animal sacrifice. But what I'm saying is that Abraham listened to the angel of the Lord over the Lord. What Abraham should have done is this. What Abraham should have done when the angel of the Lord cried out to him when he touched that knife is say that <laughs> I know you are the angel of the Lord, and I would listen and do almost anything you commanded me to, but not if it disagrees with commands already upon me by Hashem, the Lord. And so he would have grabbed that knife and then turned towards his son, but then he would have heard the booming voice of God, Hashem in this case. And, uh, God, Hashem, would have said, Nay, Abraham, put down the knife. I agree with the angel of the Lord. I have changed my mind. And now some of you, or maybe a lot of you, are saying that cannot be true. Our entire religion cannot be based on a lie or a sin. And I would say it's not a lie or a sin. It's a mistake. Abraham made a mistake. And for the record, Judaism isn't a religion. Some people describe it as a culture. In reality, it is just a very old family whose ancestors made a personal deal with God. That's it. And secondly, for all those who think that God doesn't change her mind, here is another screenshot from uh, Exodus. And I quote the very last line of that passage. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. All right, again, as I've talked about before, these videos always last uh, longer than I think they are going to, so I'm going to wind this one down. Uh, let me just say my next video is going to be entitled uh, The Perfect Mashiach. So if you don't think I can be Mashiach or I am Mashiach, we're just going to go over like the perfect Mashiach and how like it definitely limits what Mashiach can be. And I check pretty much all the boxes. That being said, as always, uh, rule number one, do not touch other people without their consent, a.k.a. do not hurt each other. And uh, rule number two, uh, it's all about honesty. Lies are a tick down, a.k.a. try not to lie. All right. God loves you all, and um, you all have a good night. I'll talk to you later.